Welcome to another episode of Stately Investing with your host, Burnett King. If you like the content I'm putting out there, give us a thumbs up. If you love the content I'm putting out there, give us a subscribe. It really helps the channel. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section or send me an email at statelyinvesting at gmail.com. And let's get started with the show. So we're going to start off today's video with um, some of my favorite types of dividends. Um, and speaking of like the three different types that I specifically look out for when I'm building my portfolio or thinking about changing my portfolio um, and just what mostly makes up my portfolio. So let's start with the overall list of my um, my stocks here. You can see um, the different symbols and I'm in Seeking Alpha again. I, again, guys, I want to highlight the the uh, great utility of Seeking Alpha it has a lot of data. Um, mostly it's free, not too much is locked down. You can go put your portfolio in. You can see different portfolios I have here and then go over to the dividends tab. This is the main tab I use to look up research and you know do analysis and things like that. Um, so uh, I can't highly recommend Seeking Alpha enough. You guys should check it out. So I think um, we'll talk about that first category, which is uh, high yield, right? So high yield dividends, uh, dividend stocks. And what does that mean? So high yield, um, typically you don't think of dividend growth investing as high yield stocks. Um, you're typically looking at something in the like two, three, four percent range for most of your dividend growth portfolio. So high yield in my mind is anything above that um, like five percent mark. And high yield can result because of a few reasons, right? So there are certain classes of stocks that are just naturally high yield, like REITs, uh, so real estate investment trusts. Um, they have to essentially pay out most of their earnings, and so that tends to make them high yield. Um, additionally, when a stock's stock price is low, um, but they're still paying out their consistent dividend, uh, that will tend to make their yield look high. So if we look at my list here, Anything that's above five, you can see there's there's not a ton, right? There's maybe 10 here. Um, so about a fourth of my portfolio in stocks. Um, but overall, you can see the highest yield right now I have is MO, which is Altria, um, you know, the cigarette um, smoking company. And their yield um, is mostly due to them having a low stock price right now. Um, but the one I'm going to talk about is actually realty income. So uh, stock symbol O, and they are at a 5.28% yield, um, which is, is again, high. Um, we can go into, so when you go to Realty uh, Income Corporation, their, their research page on Seeking Alpha, you can go over to the Dividends tab, and you can see their dividend scorecard. And I like just gl uh, glancing at this scorecard to see um, what these scores look like. And what you'll probably see in these high yield um, stocks is a relative yield that's a high score. So this is one to 10, right? And you can see there's an eight here, but then you'll see their safety score is a three, which is fairly low. So, you know, high yield, but that means there's some risk associated with it, particularly with realty income. The reason I like realty income is it's one of the best consistent REITs out there. Um, you can see their dividend growth has occurred for 26 years. So they've been consistently growing their, their yield um, or their, their payouts, I should say, for 26 six years. And I think that just shows consistency, especially for a REIT. Um, the risk is, you know, real estate is a volatile market and potentially um, they could cut their um, their dividend. But in reality, realty income is one of their, no pun intended, realty income is one of their, uh, is one of the highest, uh, you know, highest quality REITs you can go and get out there. Um, so if we look at the yield tab in particular, you can kind of see how their yield has bounced around, right? So their four year yield is around 4.4%, still pretty high. And right now it's at 5.36, again, mostly because of their stock price being lower. Um, but overall, I think uh, realty income is a is a potential uh, stock for anyone's dividend growth portfolio. So the second category I'm gonna talk about is actually low yield, right? So low yield, what I call low yield future dividend growth companies. And so if we kind of sort on low yield, you can see anything that's below 
I would say anything that's below like two and a half percent. Um, so, you know, there's again, fairly few of these in my portfolio, right? Most of my portfolio sits in that sweet spot in the middle. Um, but you can see, and these typically tend to be like technology companies, right? Technology companies aren't typically paying out high dividends, but the reason I like certain ones is because I think they have a ton of cash. And so what I look for in, um, you know, any technology stock that I'm going to include in my dividend portfolio is the ability to pay out cash in the future. And so I look at their payout ratios to see if their payout ratio is low um, and their yield is low. That means potentially in the future they will be growing their stock. And then you're just looking at their growth rates as well. So the one I'm going to look at today is Apple. So if we look at Apple, again, come to their dividend tab and then come to dividend growth. You can see their um, Kager rates of growth, right? So compound annual growth rate. Um, they're three years at 10.8%, five years at 10.4%. Um, there's no 10-year mark because they probably haven't been paying out a dividend for 10 years, right? You can see it started in 2011 um, and has just grown consistently. And so what I like about Apple in particular is um, they just have a ton of cash sitting around, right? And yes, they're going to reinvest in products. They're a technology company. And yes, they're probably going to do some share buybacks. Um, but I think over time, they're going to need to um, start paying out higher and higher dividends. And I think Apple is probably a good company that will do it consistently over time and not dramatically increase dividends. Um, but, you know, there will be growth over time and it's a great point to get in now and then just see your dividends grow. Right. So the whole point of dividend growth investment is to hopefully get uh, shares at a fair price and then watch their dividends tick up over the years because this is a long-term strategy, right? So you're planning on holding onto these stocks for a while. Um, so I think Apple fits my second category really well of low yield future dividend growth. And then lastly, again, the bulk of my portfolio is this group in the middle and what I call consistent performers. So when I'm looking at dividend aristocrats you know you can check out the link to my other video on dividend aristocrats and what those are um, these are companies that pay out their dividend consistently for so many decades right and one company in particular um, that i want to look at is johnson and johnson so j and j you can see here their yield is 2.67 percent so nothing outrageous kind of towards the low end you know medium end of my portfolio um, but when you look at, again, come to the dividends tab and look at their dividend history, you can just see their overall dividend. And this only tracks to, um, you know, 1990-ish, but they've been paying out much longer than that. So I think um, they've consistently been growing their dividend for like 57 years, I think it is. Um, so overall, you can just kind of see how the dividend slowly rises over time, where we get to this point where you're getting, you know, about a dollar um, per stock unit. And so that's that's something that I like to see is consistency, um, consistency and growth. And so that's what I call these consistent performers. You know, there's there's very little chance of their um, dividend not getting paid. You know, it, it might happen. Um, they might cut their dividend at some point uh, due to some kind of weird circumstance. But if they've been consistently growing it for this long, they can kind of weather the storm and they have a business model that can handle it. So hopefully you guys are getting some information out of this. If you are, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Um, I appreciate it. But the, again, the three categories that I look for when building the portfolio are high yield. Um, that usually comes with some risk. So things like realty income. Uh, second category is low yield future dividend growth. So companies like Apple and other technology, big technology companies. Um, and then the third category is just consistent performers. So those who have shown a history of paying out their dividend and also growing their dividend like Johnson & Johnson. So let's jump into my passive income portfolio and do a quick look at what went on this week. Um, you can see overall I'm at 13850 um, you know, the return is negative 6% overall. Uh, we're only down around 550 as the market has recovered um, quite a bit from the big dip that we saw to coronavirus and COVID-19. So um, for the week, I am up about 2.85%. Uh, gain of $385, so not a bad week. Um, you can see a lot of that was actually due to dividends. I actually don't know if this number is quite right, um, 
if in the comments let me know why this number might be off because if we look at my activity um, you can see I had dividends I had a lot of dividends this week but not quite the amount that's showing on the front screen um, so you know I got paid out by Starbucks and Caterpillar Texas Instruments Realty Income Corp Procter & Gamble etc all right so you can see um, pretty good size dividends for the week um, I like that these amounts are growing with time, right? That's uh, that's the goal of dividend growth investment is as you put more money in, those dividends continue to grow, um, hopefully no matter what their share price is doing. So overall, the week looked pretty good. Um, you know, I have some cash balance here that's going to auto deposit. My deposit actually happens on Mondays now. Um, so early next week, this should do another boost to my portfolio and, and jump that number over the 14,000 mark, which would be nice. Um, so overall, you know, not a bad week. I think the portfolio is chugging along. I haven't really made any changes in the last week. Um, I think, you know, I'm around 40 holdings overall. You guys can look at my holdings really quickly um, and look at the values of my biggest holding is in Altria Group and Philip Morris. Um, you know, I'm tending to purchase a lot of these uh, shares now while their stock price is low, um, given their high yield amounts. Um, but overall, you know, a fairly diversified portfolio across a bunch of sectors. I'm not planning to make any changes until I do another monthly analysis in, um, you know, about two weeks. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, we've been doing a good job. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Um, you know, ask, feel free to ask me any questions in the comments, hit like, subscribe. I really appreciate all the activity on the videos and I will see you again next week. Thanks everybody.